The Rare Disease Translational Center at the Jackson Laboratory is really an exciting new initiative. Um, we're, we're really thrilled about it. it. It allows us to work with patients a little bit more than we had in the past. It allows us to take the incredible science that we're doing at the Jackson Laboratory and really apply it to therapeutics that are going to help them in the, in the future as they look for treatments for their disease. I like to say that we have um, you know, sort of common rare diseases, and then we have medium rare diseases, and we have ultra rare diseases. And the common rare diseases are where there's a significant portion of the population that's affected. They have a tendency to get a little bit more attention from, from biotech and biopharma, mostly because um, there's enough of a population to treat in that respect. But the medium rare diseases and the ultra rare diseases are, are just a huge unmet need. Um, there, there's no research being done. There's very little resources in terms of mouse models, and that's one of the areas where we come in. For a genetic mutation, we are very able to very quickly and rapidly take that genetic mutation and precisely engineer it into a mouse model. Having that patient avatar gets us probably halfway to where it is we need to be. The other part of this is taking that patient avatar and the mouse model that we have and applying these new genetic medicines, quote unquote. There are ways now, and the technologies are really rapidly advancing so that we can, um, actually once we understand what the genetic mutation is, tackle that disease at the level of the gene and the mutation. Success looks like getting more patients uh, into the clinic. What we need to be able to do is string all of these things together in a very efficient way so that the kids are not waiting to get in the clinic because quite frankly, what these kids don't have is time. This is my daughter, Willa. I want to introduce you. She has multiple sulfatase deficiency, um, which is a terrible regressive condition. Um, so she used to be able to run and walk, but slowly the cells are dying throughout her body. Um, but there's hope. We are developing a treatment um, and our mice at Jackson Labs have been treated. And I just wanted to tell you we appreciate you so much and you're making such a difference for these children. We're fortunate to be working with many patient organizations um, from, the, from the N of 1 population where there's only one child that has been identified with a particular mutation, you know, to those organizations that have hundreds, to those organizations that have thousands. And so we, we really span the gamut and, and we try, you know, to take advantage of opportunities where we can. We are about, you know, providing resources, teams, and environment to help facilitate, which is something that we've always done here at Jackson. We've always done it exceptionally well. We have at least two groups um, which are really on the verge of, of the clinic. One is the multiple sulfatase deficiency with Amber Olson um, and her organization and Alan Fingus, and then Jocelyn Duff and the Cure CMT 4J. These are groups that we've worked with pretty much from day one. We've made their mouse models, we've characterized their mouse models, we've done the gene therapy on their mouse models, and we have found that the safety and the efficacy of the gene therapy that we're working with um, is just incredible. We are enrolled in two applications for Bespoke, which is an NIH program that allows us to test these gene therapies in a way that doesn't rely on the patient organizations having to fundraise you know, $25 million in order to get their children treated. And that really is, you know, sort of the sad reality, and that's the areas that really need to change. Can can Jax be bold? Um, I think we absolutely can be, and I think that this is really what we're set up to do. I saw it happen in SMA. I saw communities come together. I saw things get done in a much more streamlined and, and efficient way. We need to be the one who kind of link arms with the rest of the community and push for these clinical trials to happen. We can either be the individuals who sit back and let somebody else do it, where we can take the reins and do it ourselves. We're really taking much broader steps, bolder steps, bigger steps to be a part of this patient community. The center is about the beginning, the middle, and the end, about getting patients their diagnostics, getting their mouse models made, getting their preclinical work done, and also advancing and trying to change policy down the road so that we can lower the barriers to, to getting their treatments. I'm most excited about seeing kids getting treatments. We see it now but it's few and far between. We need to go from the, the, the handful of, of patients that we see actually getting into the clinic and getting into treatment. It can't be the exception, it, it has to be the rule from now on.